AI is so vast and has so many implications, really every asset class in the real estate industry, boards need to be very up to speed on what's happening. Hello, I'm Mary Hogan Prusi. I am a senior advisor at Fifth Law. I have spent my entire career analyzing and investing the REIT industry, publicly traded real estate companies. For most of that time, I was an investor in the space. And now I spend my time, in addition to advising Fifth Wall, I sit on the boards of four public companies. AI is a technology that has implications for all companies that are very different than some of the innovations and new technologies we've seen recently. But it's something that you just need to make sure somebody in your organization is on top of. AI is so pervasive and is gonna change the way we do so many things that board members themselves need to be very up to speed on what's happening because otherwise they're not going to be able to determine how well the company is equipped for innovating right along with this and managing the opportunity and also the potential pitfalls. Hi everyone, my name is Ofer. I'm a partner on our partners coverage group here at Fifth Wall. I manage our relationship with our many strategic LPs. Uh, with me today, we have Sarah Liu. She's a partner in our investment team and leads our effort uh, in AI and generative AI. So there's obviously a lot of buzz out there that relates to, to AI. AI is not a new topic. We've been investing in AI since, since 2016, the inception of, of Fifth Wall. What is the difference between generative AI and other forms of AI that have ex existed there uh, before we even started thinking about generative AI? That's exactly right, Ofer. Generative AI is really the new frontier, and that's what's getting the most attention right now versus enterprise AI, which has existed for decades. Even in the 70s and 80s, you could have very simple if this, then this type decision tree AI. Now, with generative AI, though, we're looking at foundational models, whether it's large language models or more image-based models that can actually generate net new content, and people are able to yield ROI much more quickly than they could previously. So I guess taking it a step further, you know, we have obviously a very diverse base of LPs. We have, you know, folks from the uh, residential sector, commercial sector. If you can just provide some kind of specific use cases or examples as to how AI is already being used and perhaps will be used in the future. And there's a couple of good examples already of companies, including some that we've invested in, that are getting great traction in this space. So document processing and document management is the top use case that comes to mind. Every single stakeholder in real estate is having to process probably many thousands or tens of thousands of pages on a regular basis, whether it's leases, rent rolls, invoices. Uh, companies like DocSumo in our portfolio uh, or Document Crunch on the contract management side are really able to accelerate that process of automatically scanning the data and plugging it into where it needs to go. Over time, these uh, solutions actually have even more potential to actually generate insights, to become a broader enterprise search type function as well, uh, where folks can actually look and search across many documents to get the answers that they need versus just having to do a control find in a PDF today. Another good one would definitely be uh, in the design space as well. We're seeing a lot of uh, the ability to now generate detailed construction documents, 3D models off of just very limited human tweaking required versus in the past, of course, that was all done manually on you know, an Autodesk-like tool where someone was drawing lines or copy pasting boxes and things like that. What are some of your thoughts on those second order effects that it could have on the broader economy? Yeah, absolutely. There will be some pretty large macroeconomic impacts from AI. Folks who are doing you know, creative writing and copywriting or uh, folks in the legal industry at the entry level, all of those are some of the jobs that, based off of some of the studies that have already been conducted, are at the most risk for automation. And so that being said, there's a lot of tailwinds here as well. Of course, for data scientists and software engineers and folks who are building in this space, but also a lot of actually resilience in the skilled trades and folks who are more in blue collar work, for example. Those trades are still very safe and not likely to be disrupted by AI in the near term. Let's talk a little bit about the risks of AI. Obviously, it's a largely unregulated industry. How do you think about balancing the risks between number one, falling behind and not adopting everything that we just talked about and essentially being a, a leader in the space, but taking some risks as it relates to that 
technology. How would you think about balancing those risks and what are some of the risks associated with generative AI? Overall, it, it would be foolish to put your head in the sand and pretend like this isn't happening. Your everyday employee, whether you want them to or not, can probably already access some form of generative AI tool and put your information potentially in there so that they can do their job more efficiently. What I would suggest is much more that folks actually embrace the change so that they don't fall behind to competitors who might be automating all sorts of workflows. That being said, like when you do adopt these tools, you do have to actually use some caution, of course, and there's, there's a lot of risk out there as it relates to data privacy and how information is being used. Uh, there's issues with inaccuracy as well, and uh, so there's definitely issues as it relates to quality, information privacy, and then also just transparency too, as it relates to decision making especially, and wanting to at attribute actually why you're making certain decisions, especially in highly regulated industries like mortgage lending, for example. So for given this is top of mind right now for so many of our LPs, how are you and the partner coverage team helping our LPs really evolve and keep up with this trend? Um, I think it all starts from education. Uh, the first thing is, and as you know, we've been in front of uh, boards and management teams in the past couple of months. Uh, what's unique about AI, it's a really horizontal technology, right? It didn't necessarily start in real estate, and it's not going to end in real estate. So the second thing I would say is identification, meaning helping them identify use cases within their organization uh, that's number one, but also looking outside and looking at the many, many companies that are trying to disrupt real estate and really helping them select the right companies to potentially partner with is another value add of us. We save a tremendous amount of time and money for our LPs by really helping, helping them to source the right companies to partner with. And then the last thing I would say is implementation, meaning most of those solutions are not ready out of the box to just implement. You really have to think about how you bridge the gap between what these organizations, real estate organizations want and what those st startups offer, we have the experience and the perspective to be able to bridge that gap, and we've done this for many, many years. I think the advent of, of generative AI is a moment for fifth wall. We understand technology, we understand climate and power issues, and we speak the language of real estate. It's such a great opportunity for us to go out to our LPs, to go out to new companies, to go out to uh, potential investments, and really be a leader in connecting AI to the needs and wants of real estate companies and investors.